Thank you for joining us for this latest edition of a webinar uh, with Fitapply. So uh, today we have with us Dr. Sanjay Kalra, who will be joining us for this particular topic on uh, beyond traditional medicine, personalized care in metabolic disorders. Uh, to introduce Dr. Sanjay Kalra, Dr. Sanjay Kalra is one of the most well-known endocrinologists in India. Practicing at Bharti Hospital in Karnal, he is currently also the president of South Asian Federation of uh, Endocrine Societies. He is the past president of Endocrine Society of India and on board the editorial board of a number of endocrine journals. I can't even name them all. There are so many of them. I was just doing a quick check, sir, on Google Scholar, and I I was going through your articles and I stopped at uh, 1,500 because so I have seen at least 1,500 publications of yours with citations beyond 20,000. So a very, very avid scholar uh, in endocrine disorders. Uh, welcome, Dr. Kalra, sir. Thank you. So, sir, today you're talking about uh, going beyond traditional medicine, uh, traditional medicine, and uh, how do we go into personalized care? So uh, to set the base for this webinar, sir, I would like to ask, ask you, how do we do define pers uh, personalized care and how is it different from traditional medicine? Huge tomes have been written on this. Uh, and there are many, many definitions. But let's look at it in a very simple manner. The person in front of us is the reason for our existence. If that person did not exist, the patient who has come to our clinic, the patient who is lying down in our ward, or who is seeking treatment in the ICU, mm -hmm. if the person did not exist, we would not exist as doctors. So first of all, we should be grateful, we should be thankful, we should be mindful that that is the person who is the center of our universe. If we can understand this, all we have to do is uh, to be a bit mindful and a bit humble, a bit grateful. Then the definition of person-centered care follows automatically. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. Second is that each person who comes to you, to your clinic, now let's talk about diabetes, pre-diabetes, obesity. Each person will have a set of uh, beliefs and thoughts. Those beliefs and thoughts are ingrained in that person. Based upon those beliefs and thoughts, the person will exhibit various behaviors. The behavior might be following a healthy diet. It might be not exercising. It might be smoking uh, two packs of cigarettes a day. These are what is done outside the OPD. The behavior also might be being rude with you as a doctor being accepting. So there are various emotions that come into play. We use the word sapiotype, S-A-P-I-O. Sapio means intelligence. So various sapiotypes that come into my OPD. As a physician, being person-centered mean, means, number one, respecting the patient who has come to you, the person who has come to you. Number two, accepting that the person has a right to have his or her own sapiotype. Sapiotype here means the beliefs, the thoughts, the behaviors and actions. Uh, the actions might be in words. So if I use it in terms of Indian philosophy, I'll say four things. The patient will come with a set of beliefs and thoughts, language and actions. So we respect that the person has a right to whatever he or she believes in or thinks about. What will I give in return to the patient? As a physician, I should be able to respect the person's preferences, needs, and wishes. If I'm able to respect that, that is all we are saying. Just respect that. That is what person-centered care means. So respect whatever your patient has come in with and whatever your patient wants. We are not saying you give your patient what she wants. Supposing the patient comes and says, uh, give me a tablet, I want to commit suicide. You're not going to do that, right? So that is something very extreme. But it's just to drive the point. The patient comes with type 1 diabetes, she says, I refuse to take insulin. You are not going to give her complementary therapy. Th that is not what person-centered care means. It just means respecting the patient for his or her needs, wishes, and preferences. Sir, so is it different from what we consider as traditional medicine? Or wasn't this what traditional medicine was supposed to be? Different I guess. <laughs> it was. So the word traditional also depends upon who you are. And uh, without going into um, politics, so we have liberals and we have conservatives and uh, we have people who are woke, W-O-K-E, woke. So each person would view traditionalism in a different manner. But when you speak of traditional medicine, some people will think of Ayurveda. That is traditional. 
others may say homeopathy yet others will say the medicine that was practiced before 1947 and others may say whatever was practiced in the previous generation so traditional also has a different time frame but i think uh, when we look at physicians of the past uh, they got their ideas right if you look at ayurveda the textbook charak samhita speaks about the quadruple of atreya in hindi atreya ka chatushpad the quadruple of atreya says that for successful therapeutic outcomes four angles of the quadruple have to be equally strong mm-hmm. you are sitting on a chair right now your laptop is on a table all the four legs of the chair or table have to be equally long equally strong only then will you get stability so the quadruple of atreya says that the physician the patient the drug and the attendant all four have to be equally strong and what atreya did was he brought the patient to this quadruple so he said that you have to strengthen the patient a same thing we get from tamil literature as well so the tamil classic is thirukural which was written by thiruvalluvar and uh, we have the quadruple of thiruvalluvar which is verse 950 in thirukural exactly the same thing if you want good health you strengthen the physician the patient the attendant and the drug so traditional medicine did get its mojo right and that was to involve the patient as part of the team of course we have further developments of, uh, after that and we can speak about that so to sir ek idealized personalized care plan kya hota hai for a patient suppose a patient walks into your clinic can you give me an example maybe or something some anecdote or So can you just tell me what is an idealized personalized care plan for a patient let's take the analogy of a journey in elesh uh, you and i we want to travel to new delhi for whatever reason so that is the plan we want to travel to delhi but you are traveling from daman and i am traveling from karnal the same plan is not going to work for us for you it may be more efficient to come by air for me road or rail would be the best there are two people in karnal i live right next to the highway i would prefer to take a taxi i am 10 kilometers away from the railway station and very few trains stop at my uh, city but for another person who lives right next to the ra- to the railway station he'll say uh, i want to take a train why should i take a taxi so you got the hang of it yeah, now yeah. the same thing in the opd what is the outcome the rigveda says the truth is one but the paths to it are many so again without going into philosophical discourse uh, i may wish to practice a particular religion religion i may be atheist i may be spiritual i may not be but finally the truth is one i can choose a different way of reaching that here in person centered care the truth is one that is good health the paths to it are many so let's look at the steps and let's start backwards now the truth is one we want good health but what is the definition of good health is it physical mental social emotional health what is it what do i prefer what do i prioritize uh, as an example i might say that uh, i want to live a happy life with my family members i do not want to leave home so if uh, management involves for me migrating to new delhi or bombay and living there for 6 months in the hospital mm-hmm. i do not want to do that let me stay at peace at my home that is my priority for another person it might be i have another 50 years to live so what does 6 months matter in a hospital ward i'll go to delhi or bombay and get my treatment done so the outcome will be decided based upon the person's preferences that's first step the second is how do you reach there first of all you have to know where you are so someone might have uh, diabetes with obesity another would have diabetes with kidney disease so look at the biomedical stuff where are we starting from now you have a beginning point and you have an end point now it's easy to chart the journey this was in simple terms if you allow i can continue so how do you define the beginning and the end we spoke of the definition of health for the outcome physical mental social whatever words you wish to use from the who add another word which the who did not use that is sustainable optimal health today the patient is healthy 
but you know that whatever behavior is going on or whatever medication is going on is going to put you in trouble tomorrow let us say i started corticosteroid 60 mg per day today the patient is responding but what is going to happen after one year who is going to take care of the cushingoid habitus the osteoporosis the diabetes so it has to be sustainable health second uh, if you use that definition for the end point we should use the same definition for the beginning so the beginning uh, the terms we use are biopsychosocial model look at the biomedical the psychological and the social status of the patient is the patient happy or not is the patient in distress or not does the patient have social support or not these will help us define the process or the journey uh, supposing i prescribe a medication which is worth 300 rupees a day can the patient afford it or not that would be the first thing no before prescribing mm. uh, psychological issues uh, the patient is depressed is anxious let me fix that up first should i fix the depression simultaneously along with the glucose control or should i fix it sequentially if i fix it sequentially what do i do first what do i focus on the glucose or the depression which is more life threatening which is more quality of life threatening how will i find out i ask the patient or i look at the tests so sequential simultaneous in between is swift sequential sequential doesn't mean call the patient after 3 months and say okay how's your anxiety now you can do part of the work today and you can do part of the work next tuesday mm. right so yeah. different ways now we spoke of three things bio psychosocial but then if atreya use the word quadruple it means there must be power in the number 4 as well so the fourth angle which our colleagues have found from public health that is environment so biomedical psychological social and environmental optimization is required i tell my patient madam you must go for a walk every evening one hour did i ask the patient whether there are stray dogs in her locality or not who have bitten her neighbor did i ask my patients whether there are uh, maybe naughty boys who might have trained in uh, some armed forces medical college somewhere in the world uh, who stare at her so i didn't ask her so how do i know so the point is uh, conversation and this is uh, what person centered care is about there is a person in front of you you respect him or her for whatever he or she is mm-hmm. understand him or her from a biomedical a psychological a social and an environmental perspective mm-hmm. understand where that person wishes to be mm-hmm. what's the definition of good health and then you work together to chart a plan to reach there that's what person centered care is that's what individualized care is राइट सर बिफोर आई टेक इट फॉरवर्ड वन केविट सर हम एफ एम सी वाले बड़े ही वेल मैनर्ड होते हैं हम नोटी हरकते नहीं करते आपने हमारे कॉलेज का नाम तो लिए ले ही लिया सर रोशन बेस्ट कॉलेज इन दी वी आर प्राउड ऑफ इट थैंक यू सर सर बट मुझे ये बताइए कि ये वॉट आर द चैलेंजेस दट फिजिशियंस फेस इन in implementing something like this because it is not an it's an easy concept to understand once you explain it like that but kya usko implement karne mein challenges hain what are the challenges bahut aate hain main apne challenges ki baat karta hu the biggest challenge is time ab kehne ko time should be available for everybody but when you have a busy opd you have multiple things to do you have to learn time management so the biggest is time how do i include all this in x number of minutes which can be 2 or 3 or 10 or 15 minutes and you know that there are multiple other things to be done also in the same day so one is time we'll do the challenges now and then we can talk about the solutions later mm-hmm. another constraint would be your own health if you are biomedically healthy if you are psychologically healthy and if you are socially and environmentally healthy only then will you be able to become a source of support a pillar for another person who needs your help so the first issue is time the second is your own health as a physician multiple things in health it's not just about making sure that you are looking good and your bp and glucose is normal 
the third thing would be perhaps communication skills we are not trained in communication in college so that's a third issue when you do let us say an md in gynae or an md in uh, uh, medicine uh, you are so focused on acute care you know running around handling things in the present that you never think about the future even in the opd you see patients in a cross sectional manner i saw the patient today but i am not bothered about what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow by that time i will have left the department someone else headache in uh, as a consultant in chronic disease in pre diabetes diabetes obesity pcs you have to handle the patient in a longitudinal manner not cross sectional so we are not trained in that longitudinal follow up everybody learns the hard way that's part of growing up i think as a doctor so we have identified three constraints so far one is time second is your own health which includes psychosocial health the third is lack of communication skills the fourth and uh, something which i face quite frequently is called uh, compassion fatigue now what does fatigue mean i am healthy i am doing fine uh, but certainly there will be a difference in my physical and cognitive function at 9 am in the morning when i begin my opd and at 2 pm when i finish that is part of uh, human nature human physiology everyone would get fatigue uh, how do you express fatigue someone would say my shoulders are tired my hand is tired because i had to type or i had to write another person would say i would say my voice fatigue in the in the afternoon in uh, summer times i have no voice left to speak all these are objective they are definable you are willing to share with colleagues so therefore you get support so i might say you know my th- throat is dry i need a break for 5 minutes i have to have a lemonade but the fatigue which we which we miss out is called compassion fatigue you get tired in the age of being compassionate so everybody is not born mother teresa in the morning you say yes madam let me help you out with your environmental issues i know you don't want to take insulin but see these are the reasons for taking after that young man okay you are 25 years old see so many things to do in life let's take care of you so that you can be as young as you are today you can be as young as that 50 years from now so all this kind of talk goes on and by 1 pm or 2 pm you are the grouchiest doctor in the world this happens to everybody so this is compassion fatigue this is the fourth uh, constraint to compassion fatigue let me add another word which is emotional fluidity and we can speak about then we when we speak about the solutions to these four challenges so solutions solutions uh, for time nilesh uh, time management if the mm-hmm. issue is time now we cannot migrate to mars there are 25 hours in a day on mars mm-hmm. but you see they haven't started a colony there and then nobody has diabetes also on mars so what would we do if we went there mm-hmm. so you can't migrate to mars you have to stay on earth so time management in time management you how do you touch the patient so touch the patient in multiple ways through multiple aspects of his or her being if you can ask only five questions if all those five questions relate to the pulmonary system did you cough did you have cough with expectoration did you have blood in the cough was the cough associated with chest pain was it associated with fever you are not person centered you are chest centered pulmonary centered which is fine it is a good thing to be you have to take a complete history but if you add a few questions so how are you doing madam uh is the harvest going on do you get allergy when the wheat is being cut or maybe when the rice is being harvested this is from my part of the world it's an agricultural belt but if you are practicing in bombay or gurgaon it is even more important so madam how's the pollution in your part of the city did you check the aqi Mm-hmm. do you wear a mask when you go out to work mm. right you are touching various aspects madam mm. anybody in your family who is coughing anyone in your society or in the neighboring flat mm. maybe madam there's a viral fever going on has anybody spoken to you about that at office are uh, you work in a multinational how many people have been reporting sick i see that you are looking so haggard are you having to do the work of three people maybe everybody else is sick in your office 
yeah, they are not sick, but you see, there are floods uh, around us and many people have not been able to travel to work. They've not been able to commute. So, madam, are they on leave, sick leave or what is it? No, they are working from home. Is that an option for you as well? Perhaps you can work from home. That will save you two hours in traffic and you might be able to recoup your energy. You might be able to rejuvenate yourself. Right. So now these few questions, they, these are a person-centered way of asking the questions. Do not forget the cuff and expectoration and fever, but ask these as well. Got it. Got it. Got it. In the same unit of time, try to touch at least try to touch base with the biochemical complaint that the patient has come with that you have to do, but try to ask at least one psychological, one social and one environmental question. That would be the take home. So let's try this Nilesh. Uh, I'm a person who lives with obesity. Mm. I'm struggling. So we assume that you've taken the biomedical history. Uh, mm. Why don't you reach out to me? And we have, uh, let us say 60 seconds in a busy OPD. So, psychological, social, environmental. And the challenge is we have only 60 seconds. So, don't feel uh, afraid to sort of... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, ideally, it shouldn't be done in a conversation. But don't feel afraid to stop me after 20 seconds. Otherwise, you won't be able to ask those three questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. So, uh, you want me to ask questions on, uh, on yeah. this? Uh, you have to touch me psychologically, socially and environmentally in the OPD. So, that I get the feeling that... Uh, uh, I have a person centered doctor. So, uh, sir, ye aapke jo weight jada hai, usse aapko koi social aapke friend circle mein aapko bahar nikalne mein koi takleef to nahi hoti ya aapke abhi uh, friendship apne dost ke saath utni hi strong hai. Dost to kya to sab badhiya hai yaar par dukhi bahut hoon yaar. Wo pantheni fit aari aur mera bahut mood off hai. Agar aise weight badhta gaya, mere to aur 5-10 thousand rupees lag jayenge nea wardrobe banane mein. Itne paise hai nahi yaar. Tanka hai nahi aaj kal. Bahut bure hal chal rahe hai. Kya batao? सोने में तो कोई तकलीफ नहीं है नींद अच्छी आ जाती है रात में या उसमें भी तकलीफ होती है सांस फूलती है उस तरह सब ना ना बहुत बढ़िया है बड़े अंडी अंडी सपने आते हैं अब सर अब मैं यहाँ मेरा फुल स्टॉप हो गया अब मैं what other things do you think I could have touched upon right now within the constraints that you gave me? So, uh, we began very well, actually. It was perfect. So, mm -hmm. but there was a leading uh, sentence and we could have, uh, the English word is segue, uh, leading from one to another, mm -hmm. S-E-G-U-E. So, uh, we began very well and you asked me if there's any social impact. Mm -hmm. And then I answered, uh, no, there's no social impact. I'm mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. hmm. So that's a financial impact. So hmm. now how do we address that? Let's move on and take charge, please. So you treatment I'm telling you, is it going to be too expensive? Or do you want to give some drugs or some other drugs? If you do it for 2-3 months, it will be very good. I will be very happy to give you. After 3 months, my old friends will come back to my old friends. ये जो मेरे एम्प्लॉयर हैं वो सारा पिछला बिल पूरा कर देंगे मेरा उसके बाद मैं तीन सौ रुपए वाली गोली ले लूंगा अभी आप थोड़ा सा सस्ता इलाज कर दें ओके अरे यार कोई दिक्कत नहीं इसका फायदा उठाओ आप चलो दवाई तो सस्ती लिख ही रहा हूँ मगर ऐसा करो ना जो आप अपना पेट्रोल खर्च रहे थे कार पे या अपनी बुलेट पे उसको बचाते हैं पैदल चलना शुरू करो डॉक्टर साहब मेरा दफ्तर जो है वो आठ किलोमीटर दूर है आठ किलोमीटर में पैदल कैसे चलो तो उसका आंसर क्या होगा डॉक्टर निवेश पार्क द कार आफ्टर सिक्स किलोमीटर दो किलोमीटर पैदल चल लो हाँ एक चौथाई तो पेट्रोल बचेगा कोई जगह होगी पार्क करने के लिए ढूंढ लो सर आई थिंक सर वॉट यूर Actually, telling us is to improve our communication skills, listen more attentively to the patient, and take. So, what people like us usually do is we have a set of questions that we need to ask, or we have those questions asked by line. What you are telling us is listen to the patient and continue the uh, continue the dialogue which the patient is giving you yeah. instead of trying to initiate your own dialogues. Yeah, and uh, you 
many times so the term we use is responsible person centered care because see in the beginning i said now if i say that uh, as a person living with obesity maine bp ki dawai nahi leni maine sugar ki nahi leni maine motake motape ki bhi nahi leni so then as a doctor andar se awaaz aayegi then why have you come to me why are you wasting my time but don't do that because as a doctor you are uh, an ambassador of the entire healthcare ecosystem the modern healthcare ecosystem and if you happen to become a rude representative of the healthcare ecosystem nothing may happen to you as an individual you will also lose practice the patient is not going to come back to you mm-hmm. if you're not sensitive but the patient will get disheartened and he or she will go to alternative care mm-hmm. and uh, that is wrong i mean we should be good ambassadors of our chosen discipline whatever it is mm-hmm. so uh, tone might be yes i understand ke aap bp sugar ki dawai se bachna chahte hain magar aap dekho na abhi to dikkat hai sher aaya hua hai ghar mein aisa nahi hai ki sher aayega 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 jab wo aayega tab ka tab dekhenge abhi to sher aaya hua hai isko to nikalte hain ek bar acute problem mein se nikalte hain mm-hmm. ab aapka laptop hang ho gaya usko to theek karna hai to thanda kare usko thoda sa time ya mm-hmm. ab खेत में पानी भर गया उसको तो निकालना है तो निकासी करनी पड़ेगी हमें एक बार ये जब कर लेंगे उसके बाद फिर आपसे बात करते हैं पेशेंट विल से डाइट लाइफ एक्सरसाइज में फॉलो करूंगा हाँ जी जरूर करें वो तो करना ही है आपने सो अर्लियर माय आंसर वुड बी वेरी सरकेस्टिक आज तक तो किया नहीं बीबी उनकी करेंगे तो ठीक है बट द सेम थिंग कैन बी हाँ जी वो जरूर करें दैट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आप अभी तक सैर कर एंड देन शी से मैं तो जी बहुत सैर करती हूँ बहुत डाइटिंग करती हूँ माई एच बी वन सी इज इलेवन परसेंट मैडम तभी तो बचे हुए हैं आप क्योंकि आप डाइट और एक्सरसाइज कर रहे हैं नहीं तो 11 परसेंट के साथ कॉम्प्लिकेशंस भी आती तो वो आप जरूर करते रहें मगर थोड़ा सा आपको सपोर्ट करते हैं ये आप दवाई या दारू या टीका जो भी है वो आप लें और ये आपकी मदद करेगा गाड़ी वापस पटरी पे आ जाएगी देन वील मूव है सो जस्ट ट्राई टू सॉर्ट ऑफ पैराफ्रेज इंक्लूड द पेशेंट इन द एंटायर प्रोसेस राइट राइट अच्छा सर अब बिकॉज अब तो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आ गया है देर सो मेनी डेटा पॉइंट्स एनालिसिस टेक्नोलॉजी पेशेंट स्मार्ट वॉचेस यूज करते हैं पीरोमीटर्स उनके फोन पे होते हैं क्या इस सब से फ्यूचर ऑफ पर्सनलाइज केयर विल चेंज ज्यादा इम्पैक्ट पड़ेगा नो इट बिकम बेटर आई थिंक बिकॉज पेशेंट इज टेकिंग मोर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी सो इफ पेशेंट इज लेटर से फोकस्ड ऑन एन आउटकम एच बी एवं सी और एल डी एल कोलेस्ट्रॉल पेशेंट हैज अ राइट टू कम बैक एंड आर की विद यू डॉक्टर साहब आपने मेरे को एक दवाई दी मेरा एल डी एल तो टस से मस नहीं हुआ या आपने मेरे को शुगर की छह दवाइयां दे दी और तो भी मेरा एच बी वन सी एट परसेंट है तो पेशेंट हैज अ राइट टू से दैट ऑफकोर्स पेशेंट से भी एक्सपेक्टेड है शुड नॉट यू नो वाइन और कंप्लेन और बी रूड और बी एंग्री और सरकेस्टिक बट स्टिल दे हैव अ राइट so what is your answer let me intensify let's work harder let's work together jab ye sab ai wali cheeze aati hain aur wearable devices aati hain to apart from the outcome you can also focus on the process so patient will himself or herself say ke yes i should have walked 10000 steps but i have averaged only 8 and 1/2000 mm-hmm. uh, one advantage of ai is that we can use uh, ai is part of digital therapeutics so you can do digital hand holding for your patient and i think these numbers and processes are very good uh, to all the physicians who are logged in i would always uh, say that you can fall back upon the bhagavad gita if you get in trouble to karam hamare hath mein hai hum karam kar rahe hain dekho aap diet kar rahe hain exercise kar rahe hain you have stopped smoking you have uh, begun sleeping well you are doing all the right things hum bhi karam kar rahe hain we are giving you the best possible medication as per guidelines फल किसी और के हाथ में है मगर हम चलते रहेंगे लेट अस नॉट लूज फेथ एंड वी विल सर्टेनली गेट बेटर हेल्थ सर सर जैसे हम ट्रेडिशनल एलोपैथिक मेडिसिन में एच बी एन सी यूज करते हैं टू मेजर के भाई हमारा ट्रीटमेंट कितना सक्सेसफुल रहा है इज देर समर आउटकम्स एंड वी शुड थिंक ऑफ एन वी लुक एट पर्सनलाइज केयर या एच बी एन सी तो हम मेजर करेंगे करेंगे क्या कुछ और भी है पैरामीटर्स जो हमें मेजर करने चाहिए या मेनी एक्चुअली सो अर्लियर वी हैड समथिंग कॉल्ड द ग्लाइसेमिक ट्रायड फास्टिंग पोस्ट प्रेंडियल एंड एचबीएमसी देन दैट गॉट एक्सपेंडेड टू अ ग्लाइसेमिक पेंटाड थ्री एक्शन ओरिएंटेड टारगेट्स फास्टिंग पोस्ट प्रेंडियल एंड एचबीएमसी 
and too caution oriented minimize hypoglycemia minimize glycemic variability yeah. then we created the glycemic uh, sixer three action oriented fasting pphb1c three caution oriented which was minimize hypoglycemia minimize nocturnal hypoglycemia and minimize glycemic variability why nocturnal hypoglycemia was added was because the pathophysiology of hypoglycemic complications is different in the day and in the night in the day you might have tachyarrhythmias because there is sympathetic predominance at night the parasympathetic tone dominates so you may have bradyarrhythmias now we have the glycemic spectrum the seventh point is time in range mm-hmm. it is a glycemic rainbow that you have to look after so these are the hard points with regards to glycemia but then other uh, models have been created the uh, the metabolic uh, pentad the metabolic hexad these angles include many other things like blood pressure lipids body weight anthropometry uh, other uh, metabolites like vitamin d uric acid but the main one i would like to focus on is pro patient reported outcomes or person reported outcomes hmm. so ask the patient if there is nothing else that you can use you use who5 that is five questions how are you doing how are you feeling simpler than that would be phq2 uh, uh, patient health questionnaire 2 it is also known as huli's questionnaire mary huli was the scientist who found out that just two questions instead of 9 or 36 are uh, efficient in helping you find out whether the patient is doing well have you been depressed have you been down and out in the blues that's all you ask mm-hmm. uh, what i would suggest from india is a validated tool that we created in our center this is called the glucocoper so what we realized nilesh was that when you are speaking about science the difference between uh, traditional allopathy and traditional traditional we are aware of pathophysiology biochemistry mm-hmm. so we always speak in pathophysiologic terms mm-hmm. uh, you will get dysfunction if you don't take our medicines xyz dysfunction you will get in trouble you will end up with adverse outcomes so everything is pathogenetic everything is talking about adversity mm-hmm. the traditional healer doesn't know all this he mm-hmm. just knows that health is happiness harmony that's the definition happiness and harmony so he speaks in that language it's called a salutogenic language salus means health in latin salutogenic language aap hum aapko theek karte hain aap tandurust rahenge aap ye do jadi booti khaye isse aapko tandurusti milegi khushi milegi khushali milegi smile bhi aa jayegi chehre pe aju baju wali bhi you will get a smile back in return aju se bhi and baju se bhi okay so see the smile came now mm. why is it that we can't use salutogenic language mm. did williams tell us not to did hutchison tell us not to mm. no but agar aap andar se smile karte hain mm. to automatically a language part and parcel of life ban jayega so so let me take the uh, let me wear the turban of a doctor now nilesh let's say uh, you are the patient and you come in with let us say an hb1c of 7.9 mm. and uh, maybe macro albuminuria so two statements and dono mein sach bol raha hu main liye ji aapki sugar out of control hai aapke gurde kharab ho chuke hain hamari science hamari research ye kehti hai ki isse aapki heart ki bimari hone ka bahut zyada khatra hai yadi aap ye dawai nahi lenge yadi aap ye parhez nahi karenge to ye heart ka aur kidney ka khatra badhta jayega aap apne peers se ya baki jo aapke barabar wale hain umar ke unse 10 saal jaldi aap mar jayenge या तो ये दवाई या दारू ले लें या परहेज रख लें या जो भी आपने अपनी वसीयत लिखनी है वो अभी से लिखता नाउ दिस इज ऑल ट्रू चेंज द सेम थिंग यार नीलेश शुगर 7.9 आई है थोड़ी सी ज्यादा है ये एल्ब्यूमिन mm. भी ठीक नहीं है थोड़ा सा पर देख बाकी चीजें बहुत अच्छी हैं देख तेरा यूरिक एसिड ठीक है तेरा हीमोग्लोबिन भी ठीक है यार लिवर mm. भी ठीक है और जो ये टेस्ट हुआ ना थायराइड का और ये सारे फजूल वाले जो टेस्ट कराए जो लैब ने पच्चीस सौ रुपए ले लिए अच्छी बात ये कि सारे ठीक हैं तो हम खुश हैं सारे विटामिन भी ठीक हैं शिटामिन भी ठीक है तेरे सब बढ़िया है तो अब हमने क्या करना है बस थोड़ा सा परेज रखेंगे थोड़ी सी दवाई लाते हैं नंबरों को डाउन लेके आते हैं इकट्ठे 
एक गोली है तो सही अस्सी रुपए वाली ले ले यार नीलेश मेरे को पता है कि दिक्कत आ रही है घर पे पर देख कल को शर्फिया खर्चेगा आज अस्सी रुपए में छूट जाएगा तो चल दवाई लेते हैं और ये टेस्ट हम डेढ़ या तीन महीने बाद कराएंगे वैसे तो तीन महीने बाद कराने होते हैं बहुत वह तो डेढ़ महीने बाद भी करा लेंगे एंड बढ़िया बढ़िया रिपोर्टें दिखाई देंगे एंड सॉलिड सी रिपोर्टें दूंगा और आजू बाजू से ना मतलब एंड बढ़िया सी स्माइल मिलेगी गोरा भी हो जाएगा बोथ आर राइट एक्चुअली इट जस्ट अबाउट द टोन एंड दूडकोर्स आई वुड काउंसिल एवरी वन दैट Uh, be sensitive to age and gender and ethnicity and language while speaking. So uh, there are some patients in the OPD where I will be even more familiar than I am with Nilesh right now, mm-hmm. and there are others mm-hmm. where I will speak the AAP language. But mm-hmm. the tone will be the same. Madam, आप ठीक हो जाएंगे आप दवाई लेके तो देखें. और ये छोटा सा तो albumin है. छोटी सी तो H1C 7.9 है. Mm-hmm. आसानी से इसको हम defeat कर लेंगे. We'll work together. सर मुझे क्या लग रहा है कि व्हाट ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ व्हाट यू आर टेलिंग अस आल्सो रिक्वायर्स अ सर्टेन लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन अमंग्स द पेशेंट दे दे नीड टू बी मोर अवेयर या सो वो भी आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ एक्चुअली वर्किंग फॉर हिज ओन बेनिफिट फॉर हिम ही ही नीड्स टू बी मोर अवेयर ऑफ ऑल दिस एंड लेट मी फोकस ऑन दिस बिकॉज़ यू आर राइट लिटरेसी एंड न्यूमरेसी आर टू डिफरेंट थिंग्स बीइंग लिटरेट बीइंग न्यूमरेट literacy and numeracy have no correlation whatsoever with health literacy and health numeracy you might have a, a phd or a dm in a particular subject who is totally illiterate about health in numerate about health example would be me i mean why should i criticize anybody any of my patients if i were to walk into maybe a surgery operation theater how would i know the difference between a cotton suture and a silk suture they look the same to me so i'm health illiterate and the last time i scrubbed when i was an intern so obviously i am going to create a fool of myself if somebody asks me to scrub in the ot i will uh, ruin my own uh, uh, hygiene cleanliness and i also might up ending uh, you know uh, might end up uh, hurting other people around me you know so somebody who is sterile i might touch him or her and make him uh, or her unsterile so mm-hmm. if i can accept that shortcoming in myself mm-hmm. i should be able to accept it in others so first step literacy and numeracy are very important both are different second health literacy and health numeracy are different from overall literacy and numeracy recently in english we had a quiz a all india quiz it was a, a warm up kind of a round so the question was uh, they put up a video and it was a video of uh, a cat and a mouse so the question asked was what is the name of the mouse tom and jerry more than 50% did not know does that mean that they are not good in technologies no it doesn't maybe they never uh, had the time to read uh, to watch uh, english movies had we asked them chotu patlu or uh, or you know whatever uh, chota bheem and uh, chutki they might have answered they might not have separate matter mm-hmm. so that is important what do you do about it you share information create something known as information equipoise इन्फॉर्मेशन इक्विपॉइज कैसे करेंगे बाई आस्किंग बाई टॉकिंग अगर आप वन वे रखोगे ना इन्फॉर्मेशन इक्विपॉइज नहीं आने लगा सो मे बी आई नो मोर अबाउट इंसुलिन बट माई पेशेंट नोज मोर अबाउट द सोशल फैक्टर्स द साइकोलॉजिकल फैक्टर्स दैट आर प्रिवेंटिंग हर फ्रॉम टेकिंग इंसुलिन एंटिल आई आस्क हाउ विल आई नो एंड एंटिल आई सपोर्ट हर अच्छा बच्चे की भुआ कहती है कि टीका नहीं लेना कोई बात नहीं भुआ को ऐसे समझाते हैं बुआ क्या काम करती है बुआ को ऐसे समझाते हैं कि जब दीमक लगती है दीवार में तो आप कब एक्शन लेंगे जब दीमक सारा लकड़ खा जाए या उससे पहले ही या अच्छा बुआ किचन में काम करती हैं, तो उनको पूछते हैं भी देखो जब सब्जी खराब हो रही है तो आप कैसे एक्शन लोगे पहले ही ठीक कर दोगे ना अभी गैस से उतार लोगे सड़ने थोड़ी ना दोगे तो यही चीज बच्चे के बारे में समझाएंगे whatever way so mm-hmm. information equipoise strengthen the patient and mm-hmm. then reach a state of shared decision making jab aap share karte hain koi cheez wo tabhi sustainable rahegi agar aap ek hi platform pe hain hum do log ki dosti hai let us say infatuation ho sakta hai dosti ho sakti hai but will it last forever and ever will it be sustainable only if you are if you share something mm. and 
a single attribute is not enough koi marzi relationship le lo whether it is parents and children uh, whether it is uh, two friends uh, a romantic relationship a fiduciary relationship even even financial uh, two partners at work you have to share multiple things to thoda bahut up down up down ho gaya to to bhi other things take on so you share that decision making with the patient and you have to achieve information equipoise सर मैं मैं चाह रहा था कि वी हैव सर्टन ऑडियंस हम उनसे भी पूछ लेते हैं कि इफ दे हाउ व्हाट डू दे थिंक अबाउट दिस सो डॉक्टर शुभा यू हैव बीन लिस्टिंग टू अस वेलकम टू द वेबिनार क्या आप अपना कैमरा ऑन कर सकती डॉक्टर शुभा हेलो डॉक्टर शुभा हेलो Ma'am, if you would like to add something to what you heard about uh, personalized care over here, how do you do it in your practice? Ah, uh, see, actually, I am a biochemist. Okay. I am a biochemist, and uh -huh. uh, I. Have, but uh, there are people means what I have come across is uh, uh -huh. many a times I have come across people who never know that their sugar is already. Three hundred fasting and post lunch is six hundred. Mm. Okay, so mm. uh, I'm uh, actually I am biochemist, ex biochemist at Bridge Pandey Hospital, and mm. I came to. Uh, I hope uh, you like that I am a biochemist and yet listening to Doc Plexus. Is it okay with you? Perfectly fine, ma'am. Please, most welcome, madam. Yeah. So uh, I've come across episodes like. patients like in the uh, now mango season has gone okay suppose and they had been to gaon and uh, they have been to savanpadi and kokan areas and they had lot of uh, mangoes young healthy people you know two brothers or three brothers all together uh, they are coming from the same family and they all had been to the uh, their uh, gaon and they had lot of mangoes now when they have come uh, they must be getting some kind of like laziness or some uh, problems with their health care okay so they went to the doctor and what the doctor said was that get your sugar done get your cbc done and then plus at the same time uh, get, get your uh, hba no do your fasting and post lunch and come to me do your uh, cbc and then other few tests urine routine and uh, maybe uh, some other uh, examination test so uh, i have come across such people that when i signed the report actually i am a phd i was signing the report till 2017 and i was uh, very much uh, i used to be always cautious like looking to the surnames mm -hmm. and then then i realized that oh all of three are having such high sugars so what i used to do is i used to get in contact with them i used to phone them and i used to call them i used to tell them that uh, see look you are three brothers right because you have got the same father's name and same surname and uh, all young people like uh, one in uh, 29 the other one is around 40 years and uh, so one is uh, 35 so uh, all four five years difference between them but they used to say no we never had this kind of uh, this thing like we never expected that we will have diabetes but just because we were feeling little unwell we were feeling uh, we were having uh, we were feeling like eating food uh, like constantly taking something inside then uh, that polydipsia like uh, we were feeling like drinking water and we were feeling like going for urination constantly so this kind of changes happened in us so we went to the doctor for a check up to our uh, regular family doctor so he asked us to do this test so i used to say that see uh, you are having do you know you are at a risk you are having your fasting sugar is 300 plus and your post lunch is somewhere 600 your urine sugar is 4 plus and your post lunch urine sugar is uh so some so like a three plus or four plus whatever it is but you are in a danger zone so i would like you to do a hba1c so they used they never had any idea that they had such high sugar but 
because of their going to the doctor, at least they were alerted that they are having such high sugar. And uh, I didn't ask them to repeat at all because they were their urine sugar was uh, showing three plus and four plus. So I, I used to just tell them that you uh, tomorrow remain fasting and do one HbA1c and top. And all of them had, you know, 10 and 11, one had 14, in fact. So they were aghasted. I said that you are three months control because earlier also you had this uh, diabetes, which you were not knowing. What about your family history? So they used to say, yeah, they, had, they said that, uh, yes, my uh, mother is diabetic. My father is diabetic. So the history of diabetes is there in the family. So at the young age, these people had diabetes, which they do not even know. But just because of their having uh, dipsia, polydipsia, just because they were having uh, uh, I, uh, like a sensation of taking something constantly, eating something, going for urination, that made them to go to the doctor and they understood uh, that they are having this. But had they gone, so I, as a biochemist, I told them that now you are having Three, uh, a, 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 this thing, three evidences. Your fasting post lunch is high. Your uh, urine sugar is high. Your HbA1c is high. So now you better don't waste your time and you please go to the doctor and start correcting yourself. But uh, had he gone uh, to some, uh, means I being in a very big setup, I had that uh, vision of looking to the uh, earlier uh, uh, means to see the surnames and to see that they were all related. Then I called them, I asked them that you are having family history, this, that. But had they gone to some local uh, uh, this lab, so means you are talking about traditional and you are talking about precision medicine. But I am talking from the point of view of a biochemist. So that is what I said that if they had gone to some local uh, scenario or to some central lab, maybe uh, the biochemist or the author, signing authority there would have not tried to see that they are all related and uh, they had uh, this high sugar and they are very young. So when I saw that they are young and they are all three brothers, so that made me call them and make them alerted that they need to go to the doctor immediately and start the treatment. Otherwise, right. if they would have not told them, they would have not gone to any doctor and Correct, they would have taken it as a time pass. Correct, ma'am. You, you're very right, ma'am, that uh, you have to be very cautious and you have to be uh, alert about these things and warn people in advance when you think that something is wrong. It, for people who understand, it, it, it's the duty to warn others when, when they see such warning symptoms. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for uh, for the contribution. Can tell you one small evidence, uh, instance also. Like yes. I saw, uh, can I just have a uh, two minutes of yours? Yes, uh, So there was uh, one uh, uh, patient, a young boy, and he had a very high homocysteine. Of uh, actually, homocysteine has got a reference range up to fourteen point five. But now homocysteinemia means hyperhomocysteinemia. Uh, can give right because it is due to uh, vitamin B12, B6, B9 deficiency. So and uh, 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 folate, folate deficiency. So I saw that this patient had a very high hyperhomocysteinemia of some say 34 or 37. Uh, so I uh, rang up. So uh, his mother picked up the phone and uh, she said that yes. Uh, so I said you just come to me. I wanted to talk to you. Because your son is very young and he is having a risk of getting formation of blood clots. And in the future, he may be posted with the problem of heart disease or then kidney failure. Then she came to me and she said, yeah, that is my, uh, I had, he is not able to see properly with his one eye, completely like vision had gone. So the hyperhomocysteinemia can affect the eyesight also. That is why the doctor, that is the ophthalmologist, where she went, that doctor had written this homocysteine test for her, for this uh, young boy. And she came to know that he is having hyperhomocysteinemia. 
that alerted her to take the child to the doctor after that the vitamin b12 and all that the treatment first started then again after a two months or so she came uh, to the lab again got the test done and from 34 or 35 the homocysteine value had come down to around 15 or 16 and she told me that his vision was also improved so you have to keep in mind that you have to at least uh, ring up the patient and tell them that you are going through so and so problems as a biochemist this is my perspective thank you ma'am thank you for your perspective uh, dr kalra sir do no bajne wale hain hame band karne ka time ho gaya hai to ek kuch parting kuch ek shero shayari ho jaye sir uske baad hum close off karte hain मैडम को थैंक यू करेंगे फॉर पॉइंटिंग आउट के टीम वर्क है इट इज ऑल टीम वर्क एंड एवरीबडी हैज टू स्पीक विद ईच अदर द पर्सन इन द लेबोरेटरी द बायोकेमिस्ट द पैथोलॉजिस्ट एंड ऑल स्पेशलिस्ट लाइक द आई सर्जन द डायबिटीज के डॉक्टर एवरीबडी हैज टू बी पार्ट ऑफ द टीम आई यूज्ड टू आल्सो रिंग अप द कंसलटेंट आल्सो एंड मेनी कंसलटेंट्स यूज्ड टू एनकरेज मी इन गोइंग अहेड and uh, they used to thank me that good you brought this to our notice and uh, it's good of you that at least we can give the right treatment to the patient that actually works a lot and i would also like to thank you madam for being proactive everyone is not proactive but sometimes it makes a difference between life and death yeah the, the fact that the laboratory person the laboratory uh, medicine doctor is is more proactive that can actually save lives yes person centered care uh, let me share a quote from rabindranath tagore what he says is that uh, the beauty of a petal the beauty of a flower is lost if you pluck all its petals apart so of course we'll have to look up the mitochondria the cytoplasm the cytoplasmic membrane the insulin receptors and the igf1 receptors all that is fine but if you do too much of uh, you know plucking of petals somebody will look after the kidney another person will look after the heart i will look after only your pancreas and nothing else or only your adipose tissue and nothing else then the beauty of the flower is lost the okay. flower is the person in front of you the the lady the gentleman the boy or girl and if you view that person as a beautiful flower and then you view yourself as a, a person who has been uh, mandated to be a good gardener mm-hmm. and gardeners are humble people so just think of how your gardener looks after the flowers and the herbs and uh, shrubs and trees in your garden just behave like that make yourself more humble more humane then i think person centered care will become a part and parcel of our praxis so as a biochemist or something if you call the patients and if you make them understand they are I, they always like all that you know yes. they used to ha huh, they used to appreciate and that we have brought something to their notice and though they were unaware now they can t- take timely help of the they doctor take timely yes uh, it is rightly you said that uh, if in case of uh, now we are talking about traditional medicine so traditional medicine like just you give them example of that insulin ke tumhari sasu maa bolegi ke wo tikka nahi lena hai ye len but if we tell them that if we do something in time your kidneys will be शेर आ चुका है तुम्हारे घर में आ चुका है पानी तुम्हारे खेत में आ चुका है सो लेट अस टेक द स्टेप सो दैट वाज वेरी नाइस एग्जांपल दैट यू गेव फॉर अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन हाउ अ पर्सनलाइज्ड डॉक्टर वुड टॉक एंड हाउ अ ट्रेडिशनल होम्योपैथ और एन आयुर्वेद वुड टॉक सो आई अप्रिशिएट दैट सर एंड थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर स्पीकिंग आउट ओके एज अ बायोकेमिस्ट यू गिव मी माय चांस टू टॉक आई एम very much obliged to you and uh, being though i am a, a phd but i have practiced my uh, biochemist as a clin- chief clinical biochemist at the bridge candy hospital for 25 years so i was always looking to the patient care like i used to go into the deep of the report and i used to uh, look to all the details thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to, to talk in your uh, uh, great seminar okay sir Ma'am, it was a pleasure hearing you talk and uh, participate in this webinar. Thanks a lot, ma'am. We I, we hope that you keep joining our webinars in the future also. Sure, uh, sir. Sure. Sir, Dr. Kalra, sir, I think you ended it very well, very poetically by quoting uh, Tagore, sir. That 
look at the whole and do not dissect too much and subdivide the patient into different parts for each anatomy and each pathology. A, a person, a patient is a whole and not to be divided. And you got to be centered around the whole person and not go system wise. And that is what personalized care would be. So thank you once again, sir, for uh, sparing your time. Now, but you can, it's time to say good night. Good night. Jai. Jai. Good, night sir. good night to everybody. Thank you. Thank you.